All right, welcome into the Aftershock, everyone. Bit of craziness going on today. Uh, we got Colin Etnire live from Red Bull Arena. Really excited about that. And Alex Morgan joining me as always. This is the Aftershock post game show. Colin, I'm gonna I'm gonna just send it immediately over to you because you're there. Uh, obviously, we have a one one game that we will break down. But first, you know, what did you notice about the 20 minute situation that began with assuming they were looking at a Judson red card? and then turned into a situation where there may have been something said. Certainly, some Quakes players took offense to and believe they heard in the moment. What do you know about the situation from being there live in the stadium? And, and what can you tell us in terms of what you saw from the players, you know, during the situation and after the game? Yeah. So, uh, look, it's obviously this is not what we want to end up talking about on a post-game show. Uh, and I, I don't want to speculate too heavily. One of the there are advantages to being in a game in person. There's things you see that you don't see when you're watching on TV, but there's also disadvantages too. That incident all happened on the opposite side of the pitch from where I was, and so therefore I didn't have a good view of it. I certainly couldn't hear anything. What I can tell you is, I, what we do know for sure is a kind of a set of things. Van Zier said something. Jeremy Abobasi reacted to it very strongly, and that's not really what we expect from Jabo, who is a very level-headed kind of like even keeled kind of guy. Uh, and so clearly Van Zier said something he took offense to and took offense to not just in the normal way that soccer players talk trash, but in, in a way that, you know, it caused a review. I don't know what he said. Nobody knows what he said. Nobody knows anything about that. But what was put into place clearly was a review after that to find out what he said. The only implication can be that he said something derogatory. Uh, I will add a couple of things that I did see having been here, you know, obviously in the stadium. First of all, I noted that the captain, Jackson Ewell, and a couple, and basically all the black players on the pitch all went to the referee and the fourth referee to discuss the situation for an extended period of time. I ordinarily wouldn't note the race of the players involved, but given that this was a derogatory comment, I can imagine that that may be it. Um, um, the other thing that I would say, or there's two other things I noticed in person. One is... Uh, once the situation had gone on for a while and they discussed with the fourth referee clearly saying something along the lines of we're not going to remove the player Jamiro Montero said quite loudly and audibly to me in the press box was are you just going to allow this so again I don't know what that means but that was something I heard and I would say after the game uh, Jeremy Abobasi went straight over to Gerhard Stuber the New York Red Bulls head coach and they had a, a long animated discussion for about five minutes and so you know, look, I, I can't tell you what happened. They, no one, it's not like the league fed any information to the press box where they gave us a clear answer. I would just say that those are some, you know, very troubling things to have noticed. Uh, and the only implication can be that something potentially derogatory was said, but clearly the league and the referees, you know, decided that they didn't have grounds for finding that that had happened. That doesn't necessarily mean that it didn't, but clearly they didn't because they left the guy on the pitch. Uh, and that's kind of the extent to what we know. Um, and beyond that, I really, you know, obviously I really hope, uh, that nothing, you know, truly horrible happened, but I think that we'll probably hear about it in the press conference. Yeah, no, thank you for sharing that. It's, it's good that we've got you live there to be able to share some of this with us, Colin. Very clearly the first question in the press conference is going to be about the incident, the game, such as it was a good game from the earthquakes. And again, we will get to that here in a minute, but that pales in comparison if you've got five or six earthquake players who believe strongly that they heard some derogatory language and they're trying to get that addressed, teams have walked off the field in those kinds of situations in the Indeed. past. It wouldn't have been shocking if that had happened. And, you know, let's be clear, the position of this show, uh, the position of, of Quake's Epicenter, our website, and I'm sure all of our writers here, is that, you know, racism uh, has no place. Homophobia has no place in soccer and so regardless of what was actually said you know we we stand behind the earthquakes players and in, in this one and uh we certainly want to get you know hear what they're comfortable sharing with us but there is some question in terms of what they're going to do about the press conference i've asked jake pisani via a text to uh if he could ask lucci to address the situation before any questions get asked that way. If we want to ask a follow-up, we have the ability to. And if we want to just go move on to asking about the game, uh, then he's had the opportunity to address the situation the way he would like. 
Um, Alex, let me just uh, turn it over Can to I you. Can I also just briefly say, because I happen to be here live, that Jeremy Abobasi is being interviewed for the TV cameras right now. So I don't know if that stream is going to get out anytime soon or if that is going to be a canned recording. Okay. All right. So obviously, a lot of people joining us here tonight, I'm sure, uh, to hear about this, not just about the 1-1 one -one draw. Um, but uh, Alex, uh, you know, your thoughts on, you know, quickly either the game itself or the situation and kind of like, you know, what you were seeing and how you were feeling, you know, in the moment that uh, you kind of realized that this had turned from just a red card review, potentially on Judson into something bigger. Yeah, this was a really good performance from the San Jose Earthquakes. They, they did really well to get a 1-1 draw. They played well. And it's incredibly unfortunate uh, that it was overshadowed by this incident. And one other piece of information to add uh, to what Hakan has already said is that the Apple TV announcers did explicitly say that there were allegations um, of racist remarks being said by Van Zier on the field. So we don't know if they had any more information than we have or if they were just judging what had happened based on what they saw on the cameras, uh, which was pretty clear. Van Zier said something and immediately everybody in the vicinity, you know, four or five players immediately turned around and confronted him and reacted very strongly. So we don't have uh, all, all the information, uh, any information uh, about what happened in the 20 minute period uh, after that incident. Uh, clearly there were lots of discussions being had between the players and the coaching staff and uh, the referees probably off the field as well. Uh, but we are going to ask in the post-match press conference uh, about the incident and to the extent that uh, the players feel comfortable sharing, uh, we're hoping to get clarity on, on what actually happened. Because I know a lot of fans, Earthquakes fans, New York Red Bulls fans, soccer fans are, are really upset uh, by what they saw on the, the, the TV screens tonight. Yeah, absolutely. And I was, uh, I was, you know, it wasn't the first thing that I did, but um, you know, as the incident was beginning to wind down, I also had texted, you know, Dom Skipper, uh, our friend from Quakes After 90, who I had recently done a podcast with, and I offered him the opportunity to come on the air. He said that he's with some friends tonight and they were shocked by the whole incident. And he felt that he wanted to hear, you know, what had actually happened more before sharing his thoughts on the matter. And I fully respect that. Uh, but obviously we also know, hey, it, for three white uh, you know, people to be able to come on here and talk about racism. You know, it. Uh, we may not necessarily say uh, or ask all the right things that we otherwise should. And so, I want to to uh, point out uh, point out that as well. And I appreciate Dom uh, considering that. And, and I also yeah, and want to address, Jamin, just briefly that we will be monitoring the chat and, you know, racism yes. has no place in soccer and that is not up for debate and not something that should be up for debate uh, in the chat. Yeah. So if there's and, anything, yeah, if there's anything in the chat and we see that there's anything inappropriate in the chat, we will be uh, kicking people out as we always do if there's something inappropriate. But in particular tonight, uh, yeah. please, please be very careful what you're saying in the in the chat, because at this point, we actually don't know the details of what happened. Yeah. And the only thing I would add is, although we're saying uh, racism has no place in soccer, what we're really saying is it should have no place in soccer. But unfortunately, we know these incidents do can and do happen. They more frequently happen in Europe than they do here. Um, but the, this is, you know, this this reminded all of us who are fans of watching those incidents that happened over there. So uh, hope. Look, I, I honestly I really hope it was some misunderstanding or something like that. But if it's not, then, you know, we'll, we're going to stand behind the, the players and the team. Uh, and fundamentally, it's, it's a quite an easy equation from here, which is we'll just listen to what Jeremy Abobasi and, and the team has to say. And, you know, I'm, I'll be behind them. Absolutely. No, so let's talk a little bit about the game and what, what we can talk about, you know, ahead of this press conference. Because, you know, as Alex, you mentioned here, you know, this incident – uh, kind of overshadowed what was a very good soccer game. I mean, not not just the Quakes played well. I thought both sides were really into this game. It was quite an entertaining, particularly I think the first half uh, from a, from just a, a pure entertainment value was very high. Uh, the Quakes, you know, for a team that had traveled across the country came very game, very ready to play. It didn't show up always in the expected goals and in the shots, but a lot of dangerous chances in the, in the area of the box for both teams. 
And uh, the Quakes, you know, had the opportunity to strike first. Of course, one of the criticisms about Christian Espinoza is that he doesn't score enough goals. And I think a lot of that is because he's he's a in a natural winger. Uh, his strong foot is on the outside, and but he's shown an increasing ability to cut in onto his left and be able to get a finish. Started showing it more in preseason this year. That's a finish that we actually saw him do in preseason twice. He did it tonight as well. A very impressive, uh, you know, finish uh, in the situation, and and a great ball, obviously, from Carlos Carrezo, who came in late to the game. Judson started. I thought Judson played well. There's a lot of really positive things you can say overall about the Quakes players uh, tonight, Colin. Uh, where do you, where you know, where immediately do your thoughts go in in uh, looking back on the game itself? Uh, two men stand out. It's Jackson Ewell and it's Christian Espinosa. Christian Espinosa has been excellent all year, uh, and w- although he lost his way perhaps in the late stages of the Alameda phase, has been excellent throughout his career in San Jose. Uh, I think that's pretty inarguable. He's at least the second best designated player in team history. And the argument for him being number one is not that Chris Wondolowski is any is any worse. It's just that Chris Wondolowski was only a designated player for actually a fairly short period of time uh, during his time with the club. Um, but yeah, Espinos is unbelievable. He's he's class all around. He's the, he's one of the best technical players. He works his tail off, uh, and he's naturally unselfish. Naturally unselfish players don't score as much, uh, which means that you know you don't have those kind of uh, big gaudy stat lines. And but I, that doesn't matter to me. You will, every team wants. Every team is going to want a Christian Espinosa in their side, and he showed that tonight. But the other guy is, Chris, is Jackson Ewell, who was, who was excellent tonight. Uh, but he's actually been strong all year long. I, you know, this is not like his first good match in 2023. Um, and I think that it's no coincidence that his better matches have come when there was a true number six underneath him protecting him. So that happened at the very beginning of the year when you have Carlos Proezo underneath him. And today it happened with Jutsen underneath him. Uh, Michael Bevisimo is not – as natural of a, you know, a breakup play, cover sideline to sideline ball winner kind of guy. Um, and so, you know, maybe you will wasn't as standout in those games with Judson back in there and, you know, in a three man midfield, he looked natural again. And so, yeah, you is a guy who, when he's put in the right position can be uh, really influential in a game, both of the, in terms of the quakes uniforms, those of the two guys who really stood out to me. I would also note that in his brief cameo, Carlos Correzo reminded us of why we missed him. You know, he's a very strong guy on the defensive side of the ball, uh, but what he can do with the ball is what separates him from Judson. And so he's a really impressive all around six, and I'm looking forward to him kind of getting back in the full rotation. Uh, I mean, we got you on mute, by the way. Yes, I put it put it on the uh, the little guy came in the room. Uh, uh, sorry, we, we were catching. We we lost you there at the very very end. If you want to repeat, maybe the last 10, 15 seconds there. No, just saying that Grezo Grezo showed us why you know he is a designated player level guy in a, in his cameo tonight. Obviously, you know he got only about thirty minutes of of game time run. Although honestly, it's hard for me to do the math on exactly how minutes he was on the pitch given the stoppage time. Uh, but what he can do with the ball sets him apart from Judson in a positive way, and and. So you get juice in defensive game, maybe even better, and you get a way more developed on-ball game. And so I think that Grezo had a nice cameo as well. But those two guys are my two men of the match. Yeah, I think the fans are really showing the love for Christian Espinosa and what he's been doing this season. It's been special to watch, but it does get overshadowed. The headlines right now are all going to Christian Espinosa. Even people are – everyone says he's the most underrated player, but then everyone right now is talking about him. So yep. underrated, probably no more. Alex – I, you know, best Jackson Yule since 2019, at least, Uh, you know, some of those, some of those ways that he took the ball down tonight, uh, the creative shot of catching Cornell kind of coming out of goal and hitting the crossbar, uh, you know, some spins that he had, some different situations where he's escaping with the ball. Like it's a completely different Jackson Yule who's just bursting with confidence right now, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, you got it absolutely right, Jamin. Jackson Year Jackson Year has been has been good this year. He's been solid. Uh, he looks like he has a, a more well defined role that he plays well in the midfield. Uh, but this was a Jackson Year with swagger. This was a Jackson Year with confidence. This was a Jackson Year with flair. Who is trying back flicks? Who is trying back heels? Who is you know trying to chip the keeper from forty yards out? Who is you know pinging every ball? inch perfect in behind to Christian Espinosa, uh, who is uh, getting in and around the box in a way that we haven't seen him do 
enough of. Uh, and and so this was, I, I think, one of the best Jackson Ewell performances uh, I can remember in his in his professional career. Uh, he was uh, by far the best player on the field tonight. He was running everything in the midfield on the defensive side of the ball as well. He was anticipating well. He was stepping up and the Quakes press triggers were working really well. So they were winning the ball high up the field. This was vintage Jackson Ewell. And uh, if he can continue to play at this level, uh, the earthquakes have a, a much higher ceiling than I thought they did this season. Yeah, fans are fans are really enjoying what they're seeing from Jackson from the the comments. I remember last season that a lot of people were th- were like, "Hey, we need to trade him." Well, he still has trade value. He's on his way down, but whatever Lucci's done has absolutely worked. Like he's a, he's a changed player, and and that's interesting because he was the captain of this team over the past couple of seasons. It's really interesting that now, like, he's showing the potential that we saw and maybe that initial breakout that we saw, you know, with him when he first came into the league. And then just, you know, the last couple of seasons, things fell off. His, his numbers are back up, his progressive passes. Lucci's focusing him on progressive carries. Now we're starting to see maybe even a little bit more product in the final third, although he's not yet getting those expected assists that I would like to see yet. But it's all starting to come together for him, and, and it feels like, you know, we're just uh, potentially going to be able to get there. And and I, I want to give credit to Lucci Gonzalez as well, because they had an excellent strategy to get Jackson Ewell on the ball in dangerous areas with his head up, with space in front of him. Uh, and that was essentially to, to use Judson as a decoy. As they were building out of the back, trying to get out of this high press, they would have Judson making a bunch of little darting runs, positioning himself in dangerous situations. And that allows Jackson to spread out into the wider areas. And so the Quakes would play out to Jackson in the wide areas. He'd have his head up with acres of space in front of him. And the ability to play those diagonal balls, to play those through balls, to make those runs that we know he can do. Tonight he was able to do that because Lucci Gonzalez had a great strategy to get him on the ball and to make him uh, the, the quarterback uh, in the midfield for San Jose. Can I add yeah. one more thing, by the way, about the, the superlative performers? Uh, neither of these guys necessarily were standing out uh, today, but I would say throughout the course of the season, this is the best center back partnership that the San Jose has had since 2016. Uh, when it, or yeah, well, I guess it was 2015 with Clay Goodson and Muma Bernardez. Uh, and I actually think the center back partnership has a bit in common with those two, you know, John, uh, Jonah Mensa kind of is the Clarence Goodson type. He's very calm. He settles things. He's strong in the air. Uh, and Rodriguez is a little bit more fiery, more aggressive, and kind of has that rumor role where he'll step up and contest. Uh, he will also step out of his line with the ball, which is kind of an interesting wrinkle to have. But those guys together uh, look like a really strong center back partnership. You know, were they collectively the man in the match tonight? No, uh, but that's actually fine. This is the center backs. If you have a really strong partnership, that raises the floor of what the team can be. As attacking guys, maybe they raise the ceiling. But you know, if you want to be a playoff team, you gotta you gotta have a much more solid foundation. We're seeing a much more solid foundation. Yeah. So a lot of people again commenting on uh, you know just all over the place, uh, and also Phil Leva uh, has uh, made an appearance in the chat. So you know, look, uh, we are waiting here for the press conference. Uh, Alex, I haven't been able to look at my phones in the. Uh, yeah, the- the press guys are no longer on the field, so hopefully yeah. it'll come soon enough. Yeah, uh, Jake says uh, that uh, he had the same thought about Lucci, you know, coming out and addressing things. So we'll see how this plays out. I don't have a full confirmation. And there was some question about when they would start the press conference, which players would be willing to speak uh, to us uh, tonight. Uh, there may be some that are just too upset and or don't feel that they could uh, provide professional answers. And that is to be understood uh, respected and uh, and even uh, you know admired uh, in the situation because we don't know what they heard we don't know what they're going through and uh, you know they may need some time to calm down. In fact, one of the things that we heard on the Apple TV broadcast, Colin, not sure how much uh, you were able to track this, was that one of the reasons that the time took so long was that they, they there wasn't anything more they were going to be able to investigate. Uh, on the field, but they were waiting for the players to be calm enough to be able to restart without expecting that, uh, you know, there was going to be another altercation, you know, on the field. And so they were waiting for the temperature of the players 
to simmer down. I don't know if you heard anything like that or caught anything, you know, I, live in the, in the stadium. No, actually I didn't. And uh, I will say that this is a, a piece of commentary I would have on this issue is uh, we, I, it would be nice if the league had a set protocol uh, and they were describing the protocol as it was happening. So we know, for example, that uh, racist incidents in the stands or derogatory language from the stands, there is now set protocols in most of world football. Uh, usually, you know, this happens with the goal kick chant that it can be common in you know, Latin America. Uh, there's a protocol of usually you stop and pause the game, then, you know, you take the players off, then, you know, the game gets abandoned. And, and it's been illustrated. And so we know what it is. And the stadium announcement is made, right? This, none of those things happened. And I think that that's not good for the game. It's not good for the players. I, you know, I think that they, if it is a look, I, again, I'm not saying that the moment someone makes an accusation, you call the game off. I'm just saying if there's a clear procedure that is followed and the league is communicative about the procedure, it would probably be better for everybody. If it's a cooling off period, you know, maybe I guess, but that seems like kind of an odd you know, process to have. Um, and if, if you think that something quite bad has happened, it seems very odd that they would let the game continue at all. Uh, and it seems additionally odd, completely besides any procedural point, that Gerhard Stuber would insist on leaving Van Zier on the field. I think if that, you know, there was reason, there's no reason not to believe Jeremy Bobasi, he's an incredibly respected guy. Right. Why not just pull him? You know, if, if there's any question, if there's kind of an ambiguity there. But anyway, yeah, I, no, they were not feeding us any real information on the side. Yeah, and, so and, Andrew, and I do want to... Go ahead, go ahead I, Alex. I do want to reiterate that we don't know what we was don't know. alleged yeah. to have been said, but the people who do know are Jeremy Obobese and the players around him who all immediately responded, uh, uh, you know, with with clear urgency and, and it was clearly a serious matter and they should be believed uh, and, uh, uh, you know, they should have been treated, uh, you know, appropriately. And so uh, what we are hoping for from the, the post-match press conference, I think, uh, is, you know, <clears throat> Um, an open and honest reflection uh, that that reflects the club's values well. Uh, you know, we hope that that is what is able to has happened, but we want to give the players space, obviously, um, to be able to process what happened. And if they don't feel comfortable speaking, we want to respect that. What is clear is that there will need to be openness and transparency from the league about what happened and both organizations involved and that both the league and both organizations involved uh, need to step up uh, to to provide that uh, transparency and clarity uh, and, and treat this situation appropriately. So there's some uh, there's some comments here, and I think they're worth you know pulling up. And again, I want to be kind of respectful of the whole situation. There's a lot of things that we can jump to conclusions on, but we don't know answers. So that's where we're hoping that somebody will feel that uh, you know they can address to us you know what what they want to be able to get across from what happened. On the pitch tonight, whether that is just with Lucha Gonzalez, I can see a situation in which we don't get a player tonight. Um, it's happened on certain situations in the past where we just get the head coach. They're the only one who's obligated to talk to us, and, and that might be all we get. But um, one of the things that, um, you know, Colin, you were you were kind of allu you. alluding to, I think we maybe... Hey, everyone. Good evening. Um, that audio uh, is coming we through, We will be having uh, head coach Lucha Gonzalez joining us here as soon as possible. Um, so I uh, appreciate everyone for your patience and we're gonna try to get him over as soon as we can. Okay. Uh, once go. again, head coach Lucia Gonzalez should be joining us here as soon as possible. So uh, thank you again, everyone for your patience. So um, let me let me take on this question and, and Colin, you know, you, you talked about a little bit of this, you know, off air and I know there's certain things that you're not gonna be able to share here, but um, you know, there are mics around the field and they can pick up uh, what players are saying on the pitch and they can be used. The problem, and I think you're alluding to this, Colin, with some of the previous comments you were making is we, they don't have access to these things in enough real time to be able to definitively say something and take action right then and there in the game, right? Yeah. Again, we've seen situations where players have chosen to walk off the pitch and not play the game. And if the Quakes had done that, you know, we, of course, would have supported him. I was ready to start a show and be able to talk about, you know, what happened in the situation. Um, you know, I think it's important that we but the, the fact is that the league probably does have access to audio. They probably will get to hear and they'll also have the testimony of all the players who heard it. 
And so this is something that I think we're just going to have to get an answer when once the uh, the uh, disciplinary committee, you know, has the necessary facts around the situation. Um, so I can understand these comments, you know, why not take out the accused player while the investigation is happening? The problem in this case is that, um, you know, it could be potentially abused um, if the player didn't say what someone else, you know, thought they said. Um, it, it, I think it, uh, you know, is something that uh, they, the referees have to kind of gauge based upon, you know, what they're hearing on the pitch. You know, MLS I'm, uh, needs to step up and do something. You know, I don't know about you guys, but I think like situations like this are probably going to help the league take steps toward what that type of policy should look like going forward and how they need to handle an in-game situation. Because I'm not going to say this is completely unprecedented, but, you know, this hasn't happened very often in, in Major League Soccer. Yeah, what, what are your thoughts on this? It's blessedly happened less often than it's happened in, say, Italian football. Um, but, you know, and that's a testament to the league, you know, good for them for that. But that, yes, you need clear procedures, clear stands. I, I'm not trying to jump to conclusions. Uh, you know, so, yes, an investigation is warranted. Uh, and I'm willing to accept that perhaps there is a misunderstanding or a cultural difference or a linguistic difference or what God knows what. But yeah, you need to have a clear investigation, clear rules, clear approaches. And by the way, Jeremy Bobasi should be one of the people involved in that conversation because he's the vice president of Black Players for Change uh, right. and has been a, a major leader in the league uh, on these efforts. So, uh, but honestly, I, you know, uh, there are other players in that organization that are on the New York Red Bulls side. So yeah, I, hopefully there can be something uh, that comes out that has consensus and clarity. Uh, and by the way, I know, you know, that's obviously the more important issue, but it, I, this is a good pivot point to saying, one of the things that's impressive about the Quakes' performance tonight is not just dealing mentally with what caused that 20-minute disruption, but also physically dealing with having 20 minutes of idleness in the middle, uh, which is not something that you've trained for and planned for as a soccer player. And actually, I noticed that Carlos Croeso, who was coming on during that break, the trainers were yelling at him at a certain point and say, get running, you know, keep running, keep running. Because, you know, physically speaking, it really changes your body when you go from running around as hard as these guys do to still uh, to back around. Uh, but I think that, you know, they, they came back and had a very impressive uh, response, again, physically and mentally uh, after that incident. Uh, and, and they got on with it and they didn't, you know, it, it was very possible for this game to get ugly and, retro, you know, getting a lot of retribution in. It didn't. The Quakes played very professionally. They actually had a really strong performance after that point. So, you know, credit to them on all on all fronts there. And obviously they gave up the goal at the very end. But, you know, when you go to the East Coast twice in the early part of the season and you play two very, you know, really strong performances, they only came away with one point collectively, behind, you know, between them, uh, but a lot to be proud of there. Um, you know, completely uh, aside of the actual ugly context underneath it. And yes, yeah, I want to, uh, I want to talk quick faithful here in New York. Uh, it's about 45 degrees right now, so it's not the most fun to be out here. Yeah, no, they did. Uh, and, and thanks for, for covering for tonight, Colin. We really do appreciate being able to have you in person. Uh, guys, you know, I want to get, get your opinion on this because one of the things that I felt was that there was wind that was taken out of the sails of the players. And it's tough when you're going in a very physical game like this to, like, stop and start again the way that they needed to do. The Quakes looked tired at the end. And I, I could imagine a situation in which they feel hard done, like all this additional stoppage time is because of something. Hey, everyone, we're going to go to Jeremy. We're speaking we're to Jeremy. Um, we will start yeah, with uh, questions whenever you guys are ready. Uh, let's go to Alex Morgan. Hi, Jeremy. Um, thank you for, for joining us tonight uh, and, and for speaking uh, with us uh, tonight. Uh, we, we really appreciate uh, you doing that and, and hope that uh, you are uh, doing OK uh, right now. Um, I think a, a lot of fans uh, in this moment were upset by uh, uh, what they saw happening on the field. It was mentioned on the uh, TV commentary uh, that there might have been, uh, you know, uh, racist remarks said on the field, uh, but a lot of fans, and we don't have a ton of information right now uh, about what went on in those 20-minute uh, uh, conversations on the field, what happened, uh, and to the extent that, that you feel comfortable, um, I, I, I think a lot of people would uh, appreciate 
uh, clarity on 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 what happened. Yeah, I think that there was. First off, it's a difficult game. Uh, you know, when we play Red Bull, we have a lot of respect for their style of play. I understand that there's going to be a lot of duels, and and they go strong into the duels. Uh, at times, that results in late tackles on our end or on their end. That's that's all part of the game. What we saw tonight should not be part of the game. Uh, it, I can't correlate the, the various actions or the timeline that I'm going to lay out, but uh, what started with a foul that was deemed to be committed by Judson and a yellow card. Fast forward a few minutes, seconds, uh, ended with a racial epithet being used. Now, I understand there's going to be an investigation. I've been a part of those I've had to support teammates going through them. Uh, I have seen them. So uh, I wanna be mindful of that even as I share what happened. Uh, I think what's important for me to share is that I know what I heard and the reason why I felt after a lengthy conversation that we should continue on with the game is because the player who said the word claimed that it was not aimed at any of us. Whether that is a good faith comment or not, again, we'll see how the investigation goes on, um, but just a, a difficult moment once again, players being put in charge, forced to make a decision, manage all sorts of emotions because the system is not robust enough uh, to capture moments and gain clarity within the matter of minutes, seconds that these actions happen. So, yeah, I, I think what's important is that the team was united in whichever step we move forward with. And that, that goes from top to bottom, you know, coaches to, to players. Thank you, Jeremy. Unmuted. Let's go to Jamie Unmuted. Moore. Unmuted. Hi, Jeremy. Thanks for uh, speaking with us tonight. Um, was there ever a consideration in doing uh, what we've seen done in, in you know, lower leagues of, of U.S. soccer and in other places of uh, potentially suspending the game and walking off the pitch? Or you know, did, did you take the, uh, the feedback that you got from the player and what they said at, at face value? You know, uh, walk us through kind of the thought process of, of what you felt was best for that particular situation as a, as a team. Thank you. Muted. Yeah, everything was on the table. <clears throat> Again, it's a it's an especially emotional moment because when you're on the field, you don't have the same mechanisms to deal with that kind of behavior as you would if you weren't on the field. So you have to deal with them within the confines of our sport. And the fans that are in the stadium and the infrastructure that we have from an officiating standpoint it was not there was not a conversation on suspending the game uh, to my knowledge i i do believe that the refs went through their process of talking to the captains talking to the coaches trying to capture what they could capture um, ultimately i have to take what is said to me at face value and proceed with that knowledge unless I'm definitively sure that I can pinpoint the direction in which the word it was hurled at, in which I was not able to in that moment with 100% affinity. But this is what it is to be you know, black in these situations. You can't be wrong. You can't 
overstep anything outside of what you know to be fact. So you have to proceed with absolute caution, even in moments of hurt where you are feeling rather powerless uh, to handle the situation to the degree that you would like to yourself. Thank you, Jeremy. Uh, let's go to Tom Bogert. Thanks. Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you, Jeremy, for taking the time um, and all the thought that's going into your answers. Um, if I could just kind of follow up on on what you said with the kind of the timeline and, and everything that happened. So the a player said a racist remark to you. Is, is that kind of what everything started? Or, or kind of if, if you're able to kind of walk through, you know, kind of that a little bit again. The racist remark was said. I do not believe it was to me that uh, I can feel pretty comfortable saying. Uh, <clears throat> but the word was used. And from there, anyone can make any sort of inference as to who was hurled at. But that, I think that's what the investigation has to really get to the bottom of the angles of cameras, the direction of body conversation i think it's just important that we dig out all the facts because again i, I want to be as open as possible here because i think you know it, it's there's there's a lot of uncertainty when you know fans are just seeing a game stop but i also want to respect <clears throat> what will be hopefully a robust investigation. Um, also important to note that racial epithets, language cannot be hurled in any direction, whether it was to a black player or not, because that would open up any number of doors themselves. Uh, and just saying it to yourself and not saying it to anyone else. I mean, but. Just a, a difficult situation, you know. Um, but I'm, I'm grateful that I was with my teammates and they deferred to, to me. And, you know, what you saw in our ability to finish the game, the manner that we did was a team that's united and that faces any sort of adversity, whether within the confines or out of bounds, and we have each other's back, and when we make a decision, we go with it. Okay. Thank you very much, Jeremy. Out of the interest of time, um, we're going to have to bring in Lucci, so thank you very much, Jeremy. Okay. So, uh, Colin, obviously we're going... We're going to bring Alex back in here as soon as he's available. Um, and it sounds but, like we're going to go right back to Lucci too. So Yeah, so I'm keeping an eye on that. We're going to see how quickly it happens um, because they probably have a flight to catch, and that's usually a constraint yep. on the away press conferences. And I think uh, they were going to see if they could get in at least a couple of questions about the game itself, um, and hopefully we'll have an opportunity to maybe ask a question to <clears throat> Lucci uh, about the game, because I, I do think that the players put on a good performance tonight. And, yep. you know, it, since it was a Red Bulls player that uh, whose actions overshadowed the Quakes' performance, I think it's important we give the team an opportunity to reflect back on the performance as well. So let's see what we can do with, uh, with Lucci, given the time constraints. I'm sure that the team is going to be under to catch the flight. Alex, very quickly, going over to you, you got to ask the first question tonight, and I'm sure a uh, you know, a, a different type of, of press conference situation than you've probably had to face before in post games. We've had some interesting ones, but not one like this. Um, you know, as you were kind of asking the question, as you were hearing Jeremy's response, what, what was going through your mind? Uh, yeah, that was a, a really difficult um, conversation, Jamin. And, and I really, really appreciate uh, Jeremy Obosi, uh for speaking with us. He didn't have to speak with us. Uh, and for uh, addressing uh, the the incident uh, that that happened 
And uh, we 100 percent at Quake's Epicenter, I do and, and, and the rest of our team. Uh, and um, hopefully the, the Earthquakes community will 100 uh, percent stand by uh, Jeremy Obobese and uh, the, the rest of the teammates uh, and, and support them. Um, because um, what he said was was really ugly. Um, the fact that, you know, a racial epithet was used on the field, um, which is what we suspected, given the uh, the, the information that we knew ahead of time uh, was was really ugly and um, really, really deeply upsetting and troubling and, and should uh, cause, I think, a lot of uh, reflection and investigation uh, from both teams and from uh, the league uh, and hope that uh, that is uh, taken seriously and, and treated appropriately, because that has that should absolutely have no place uh, in in soccer uh, and uh, uh, it, it's it's uh, really really upsetting um, that it happened. It's it's difficult to process everything uh, very uh, uh, quickly live in in real time. And I'm uh, incredibly impressed with uh, Obobese's uh, ability uh, to do that, uh, given the given the situation. And and as he described, you know, even uh, though he was feeling really really intense feelings um, of, of anger and, and other emotions, to be able to uh, remain composed and try uh, to handle the situation uh, to the, the best of his abilities um, was really remarkable. Yeah. So, I mean, Jeremy Obovici is such an impressive person just in terms of the way that he talks about the game and, and analyzes his own performance and, uh, and uh, the things that he shares with us without ever, you know, giving away the tactics, but the way he handles you know, these types of situations, you might label them political, you might label them however you like, but regardless of the situation, whether it's, whether it's regarding race or whether it is regarding you know, other uh, sensitive situations that cause disruption in our society, you know, I, I'm not sure there's an athlete I've ever heard on a microphone who handles it with the class that Jeremy Abobasi does. Understandably, we know more and more why Portland fans hated to lose him because I'm sure he was uh, quite a beacon in their own community. And we're very, very fortunate to have him in, in San Jose. Colin, uh, you didn't get a chance to ask a question tonight because it's not normally something you do in the press conferences, but you've been in many press conferences before. You know, how does what you heard from Jerry tonight maybe stack up with, you know, the types of things that you've seen in press conferences before? And if you could hold that, it looks like we're now going to go to Lucha. All right. Thank you all for your patience. We have head coach Luchi Gonzalez. Luchi's going to uh, start with a short statement before we open it up to a couple questions. Okay. Luchi. So it's fortunate that um, the players and the people near the field and on the field had to experience uh, the 20 minute moment where. Um, you know, I, I, don't, I can't speak factually, but, but when I listen to my players in terms of what was said or not said or who it was directed to, um, there's things there that are unacceptable and, and very unfortunate and very disappointing uh, that take precedent and more importance over the game we play. So I have to be really proud of our players uh, to be together in solidarity, to, to talk, um, to decide, and to um, just – Obviously, not accept, you know, not accept uh, what, what what they hurt. Um, I don't know what the next step is. Um, I, I would hope the league uh, will take this serious to the max degree in terms of an investigation, uh, and there being consequences, potentially indefinite consequences. Uh, investigation supports what what our players understood as being true. So um, we as a club, uh, myself as the head coach, the staff and the players, uh, we're, we're going to support uh, the players. We're going to support any step moving forward uh, that the players want to act on. And um, we we'll hope we we'll count on the league uh, and the referee crew as well in terms of investigating and coming down to the truth so that there can be actions that uh, that they'll make it right. That's for sure. But but at least show that that it's unacceptable, and, and the league will act on 
on that based on uh, on our standards as a society and, and as being a top league, uh, a professional league in, in this country. Um, you know, uh, unfortunately, that that will take uh, the game as a shadow of, of that situation um, because it's less important. Um, but I'll, I'm here to answer any questions you may have uh, the best I can. Thank you, Lucci. We're going to take a few questions. We can start with Tom Boger. Thanks, Jake. Uh, thanks for taking the time, Lucci. Um, you know, I'm sure that things kind of move fast. It was a blur over that, you know, 15 or 20 minutes, but um, there was a conversation picked up by the camera that you were having with Gerhard Struber. Um, it, it was, there was, you know, some reports that, that you were suggesting that you would have subbed off the player in question. Um, is there anything that you can reveal about that conversation that you had with Gerhard um, when things were kind of going down? Yeah, that's accurate. Uh, I definitely was adamant to suggest the player should not be on the field anymore. Um, I know it's a it's an accusation, but you know I, I believe my players. Uh, I trust my players. If if uh, they say something, they're high character human beings before professional soccer players, and so you know I would trust that it's true. So that that's something I think the referees and and uh, the coaching staff of New York. Whether true or not, I think could 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 act on um, in terms of the player not being a part of the game anymore. So, you know, I I, I can't get into too much more after that. But whether the player denied it or, or accepted it, I, I don't know. But um, yes, that that's the conversation I was having uh, with the fourth official because um, I didn't have the opportunity to talk to the, the referee, um, but I talked to the fourth official and to, to Coach Truber, and that was the suggestion and the idea. Lucci, let's go to Jamin Moore. Unmuted. Hi, Lucci. Thanks for taking the time under the circumstances. Um, so <clears throat> was there ever a consideration, you know, has this been done in, in other situations, you know, like this of, you know, suspending the game or potentially, you know, walking off the field and coming back and playing after things had simmered down? What uh, indication did you have that your players felt that they – could continue in the game and be able to play the way that uh, you know they would want to, to to give in terms of an effort to the game versus how much you know this was going to be a distraction for them was there any conversation with you and players about what your next steps as a team should be thank you muted yeah the, at the very beginning when uh when i was talking with with jaybo um Mido was there jackson jonah uh the first conversation was guys you know talk talk with each other, even talk with the Red Bull players and whatever is decided, whatever you discuss and decide as players, uh, we fully support you. I fully support you. We support you, whatever is decided. So it was, I think in that early stage, it was important that the players, and I'm proud of them for, for having that process to discuss, to talk um, and to figure things out. And, and so, yeah, for sure. Uh, however, it could have ended or, you know the referees could could they have done this or that or the staffs or the the clubs i you know i i'm i am proud that the players went through a process in their own autonomy and independence as players um having experience with what they did on the field unfortunately uh, and supporting them and and them making a decision together um and and that was our that was our process and we'll continue to support whatever uh, the players decide even moving forward um and but i but i would again i'm very hopeful the league will uh will act uh and have a full investigation so that uh, there can be truth to this and clarity to this and there's a consequence it, um based on the based on the what apparently was said thank you Lucci. we're gonna take one more question guys uh from alex morgan Uh, hi, Luigi. Uh, thank you for joining us tonight. I really appreciate uh, you speaking with us, uh, uh, being able to provide some some clarity as to what happened on the field. I know a lot of fans were upset uh, by what they saw on on television, so I, I think that's really appreciated by the the community. Uh, and also want you to know that I uh, and and I think uh, I, I, I I can. Uh, 
hopefully speak for uh, some other people in the media uh, here, support uh, you and support the team uh, and support uh, the club uh, in, in what you're going through. Um, so really appreciate you, you speaking with us tonight. Uh, and um, I, I, I want to ask an open-ended question if, if there's anything else that, that you want to uh, address or, or clarify about the situation. Yeah, I appreciate that, Alex. It's it's obviously um, something you don't go into a game expecting in this type of situation. And, you know, I, I will say, um, you know, I don't know the exact rule books. I didn't have, you don't have the manual on the sideline in terms of what are just the racial slurs or things that are can't say or can't say. It doesn't matter the context, who it said to, was it said to the player or 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 not, or the ref or this, you know, to me. Um, I'm just hopeful that those things become more and more clear and, and so that there are clear actions that, that, that are taken in these types of situations, you know, but I am really proud again of the group, um, to go to, to discuss and, and, and show uh, solidarity and, and then full support for, for Jabo his teammates, uh, unfortunately to go through what they did, you know, so fully supporting him, his teammates, these guys that, um, that had this experience today and uh, and we'll continue to support them and the club will continue to support them on and off the field um any convictions that they may have as as young men uh you know and, and and that's what the best that we can do so i appreciate your support and everybody else's uh that were disappointed with the situation and hopefully we can learn more details about it and and uh and that there's uh that that we uh, improve this uh for the league for, for our country, for our society, for the world. You know, soccer for all, right? The t-shirt, the it's not just a t-shirt. It's not just a, a, a slogan. It's something we got to live and act every day. And we, we still need work. We still need work to do that better and be the examples for that. Okay. Thank you very much, Lucci. And thank you all for being with us tonight. We appreciate your patience throughout this post game. See you midweek. Okay, let me go ahead and kind of yeah, stop you can, so you can hear, stop hearing background noise. Um, so, uh, you know, yeah, now that I've had some time to reflect on both of those, I just want to kind of circle back. So first of all, Jeremy Bobasi does not need us to say anything, you know, beyond what he said. You know, he, he, uh, he's entitled to speak on his own behalf. Uh, but two particular things that he, he said, well, actually se several things struck me, uh, but two things that I really wanted to highlight is one, it's incredibly unfair that we're putting this on the players to manage this because that's effectively what we're doing in, in these situations. And you, you heard both he and Lucci kind of describe it of like, you know, the players go through a process. They shouldn't have to, uh, it's, you know, these are athletes and they're, they're in competition mode and, and they're fighting for their livelihoods. You know, they're, they're paid money to do this. And now you're asking them to adjudicate how to navigate, you know, a difficult social situation, a social political situation. That's just not fair to the players and the league needs to have a better system in place for dealing with it. Uh, and then the second thing that struck me was beyond just putting this on the players to deal with it. You're really specifically putting it on black players to deal with it themselves. And that's incredibly unfair too. Uh, and and Jabo kind of alluded to that when he said, "Look, you know, as a, a, experiencing as I did, he's saying I can't go. I can't. I have to be as you know conservative as possible. I can only stick to the most verifiable facts because I don't really have the permission, you know, to to make accusations that aren't going to be agreed upon by everybody because he'll be treated with suspicion. So those two things I think are incredibly unfair. And there's we know this in advance so the league should be able to take care of these things in advance and look there are absolutely times when there are ambiguities in the situation um i will say you know just as as one small example in usl there was a potential racist incident or excuse me a homophobic incident uh where the referee heard what was said but he didn't understand that it was a slur because it was a slang term from a different country that he wasn't personally familiar with you know Sometimes those ambiguous situations happen and they need to be adjudicated after the fact by the league office. But there's still a situation in the game and actual human beings on the field while it's happening. So there needs to be a process for dealing with those ambiguities too. 
apparently there's an ambiguity here today. Although I will say if the entire ambiguity turned on the idea of whether or not the racial slur was directed at a person of that race, that's absurd. You know, that that can't be, you know, that cannot be a reason to claim innocence. It's like, oh, I was just saying it to myself. People can swear to themselves, you know, maybe a curse under your breath, but uh, a slur, there's no justifiable reason to use it regardless of who it was uh, used against. So I would just say, we cannot put this on the players. We can't force black players to defend themselves on the field while it's happening. The league needs to have a process in those situations of any ambiguity at all. They still need to have clear actions uh, and not put it on them. And yes, obviously leave it to the investigation later. But the other thing I would say is if the New York Red Bull staff was encouraged to sub him off without a red card uh, and they chose not to, they have a lot to answer for. Uh, that is a that is a, a fairly stunning decision, uh, and and they'll need to answer for that too. Absolutely, they did end up subbing him off, uh, and I'm I, it wasn't clear to me whether the timing of that was to allow another player to warm up and then sub him off. But they also had 15 minutes of sitting there well, waiting for yeah. things that any player, if they knew, had a good sense of what was going to happen. And Lucci is asking for this at least be prepared and have players warming up on the sideline prepared to be able to enter the game, you know, depending upon what the, what the verdict is, if the referee walks over and gives, gives a red card and that player has to leave, you might be wanting to make a defensive sub or something else anyway in that situation. So, uh, you know, I don't know what took so long. He did eventually leave, but it, it, uh, you know, I, I certainly that's all going to be, be looked at and it, you know, again, respect to Lucci. Lucci for, Sorry, uh, just, for being transparent with us. No, go ahead, Colin. You're live. Yeah, you're, I just, you're the, you want to hear from yeah, me. Uh, no, I just want to add one thing about Van Zier, given that this is one of the few things that I had access to being in the stadium rather than on TV, is during that you know 15-plus minute break, he was standing away. Once things had – I mean, obviously, at the very beginning, there was – you know everybody was together. But once things had kind of settled down into that static mode, he was standing away from everybody else. He was not trying to engage in conversation. He was not trying to – assure Jeremy Bobasi that he had, you know, uh, that there was a misunderstanding or something and trying to win his favor back. He was away. After the game, Van Zier was not going over to J-Bo and shaking his hand and trying to apologize. He was nowhere to be found. And in my opinion, if that's a guilty conscience, you know, that is what you do if you know that you've done something wrong. Um, if you if you honestly think you didn't do something wrong, I just can't imagine behaving that way. Um, so that's the only other thing I would add from from what I saw. Alex, let me kick it back over to you. It looks like uh, it's being mentioned that MLS PR incident just now. I will, I will go ahead and pull that and see if we can pull that up here. And Colin, I want to be respectful of your time because I know you need to. <laughs> I do need to get to back to Queens, money. which uh, if anybody's familiar with local geography, it's hard. And and I, I do have the statement here, Jamin. I, I can read it <laughs> uh, aloud. It's a, a, a brief statement for Major okay. League Soccer. It says Major League read Soccer that for us? That'd be great, is Alex. A, yeah, it says Major League Soccer is aware of an incident wherein a New York Red Bulls player is alleged to have used language that violates league policy during the 54th minute of the New York Red Bulls versus San Jose Earthquakes match tonight. MLS has zero tolerance for abusive and defensive language and takes these allegations seriously. An investigation into this matter will begin promptly. Further imp uh, information will be provided upon completion of that investigation. So uh, the expectation... Uh, the hope, and it, it looks like it is going to be uh, dealt with very uh, seriously and, and swiftly by Major League Soccer uh, and uh, should as well by the New York Red Bulls um, because of what we heard from Jeremy Obobese and Luchi Gonzalez. They have a lot to answer for it in terms of the decisions that they made as a team uh, and, and their tolerance for uh, racial epithets being used on the field. Uh, and, and the decisions that their coach, Gerhard Struber, made uh, not to immediately sub off uh, the player, uh, Van, uh, Van Zier, after he was urged to uh, by San Jose Earthquakes head coach, Luchi Gonzalez. They're going to have to answer for that decision. Uh, and uh, they're, they're going to have to, I think, uh, answer for, for a lot of the decisions that they made. Because I was, I was very disturbed, not only by an incident that was described, but by that process that unfolded and the, the decisions were made by by the New York Red Bulls and, and that refusal to immediately uh, sub him off because I think it was pretty clear uh, that uh, from what Luchi Gonzalez said that they they uh, asked that he be subbed off and he was not 
immediately subbed off and that uh, his substitution, uh, I think uh, some minutes later, 10, 20 minutes later, uh, didn't uh, uh, address their concerns. It, by the way, if if the player, which again, based on the, all we know is what Jeremy Bobasi and what you have told us and particularly Jay Bo, since he was right there when it happened, um, mm-hmm. But if it sounds certainly like the defense the player has offered is like, oh, yeah, I said it. I just directed it somewhere else. Yes. If if you are Gerhard Struber and you hear that he's directed it t- towards anybody, anything or nothing at all, that should be enough. Like that should be enough. That's uh, th- there's, if, like maybe if the player says, no, I did not say that, you know, he I don't know where he heard that or, you know, some mishearing. Maybe you could argue he should stay on and get the benefit of the doubt. But if he's admitted to using it, my God, you know, what, what are you thinking? Uh, and, and so that's, I think, particularly shocking to me to, to kind of have heard during this press conference. Um, but yeah, anyway, uh, I, I, I do probably have to go. It is difficult to get home from, from Northern New Jersey. <laughs> and it's, and uh, it's also three hours, three hours yeah, yeah. Uh, earlier than it is for us, which is only eight, eight o'clock here. We can do this all night long still, but yeah. uh, for you, uh, 11 p.m. getting around Queens, New York, and uh, getting well. Out again, I'm in New Jersey Seems now. Like... I got to go through Manhattan yeah. all the way. Get to <laughs> all the way there. And Man- Manhattan's just quiet these days. Nothing going on there at all either. No. So, but anyway, okay, I, first of all, I just want to thank you two for for doing the show, and thank you for the listeners as well. Uh, this was not the night any of us wanted to have, and it overshadowed a quite good game. Uh, and and it's a shame on a, about a million different levels. So anyway. Thank you all. I appreciate it. Yeah. Uh, I really hope that the league, the Red Bulls, everybody does the right thing. Thank you, Colin. Fans, stick with us Thanks, just guys. a little bit, and Alex and I will close the show out. Colin, safe drive back. Take care. All right. Always great to have Colin. Anytime we can get him, I always appreciate his perspective. His mom's a journalist. He has the, you know, the utmost you know, in terms of respect for uh, what is appropriate from a journalist of how to behave in various situations. And, uh, you know, Alex, you know, yourself as well, um, you know, and, uh, and the, the, uh, the experience both of you have in terms of navigating press conferences, navigating uh, difficult situations, I think is very, very valuable to all the fans who were able to join tonight. And we still have 124 going strong. And, and uh, thanks everyone for, for hanging in there with us. Obviously, the talk is, you know, unfortunately about uh, an incident that happened in the game, but has nothing uh, as much to do about the game and the game in which the Quakes overall played well, did succumb to a late goal. And and the thing that I was starting to think about, Alex, I don't think we got all the way there before the press conference started, was, you know, how much of that was due to fatigue, due to playing, stopping, you know, and obviously you get a halftime in there and that's a plan break, but starting back up again and then kind of standing around for 20 minutes, not only that, but the stress of the whole situation, you could tell there was a lot of fatigue at the end of that game. And yes, there's always a fatigue when you head toward a stoppage time situation, but adding 21 minutes of stoppage time onto the game only benefited the Red Bulls who were, you know, one of their players is at fault for the incident. For me, you know, that kind of giving giving the a team that... So if, it, if a team gets a red card, I personally don't think you should get any stoppage if, if the red card is your fault. You should get no stoppage headed on to the end that benefits you. Uh, in this case, it felt like that 21 minutes really just benefited the Red Bulls. And, uh, and unfortunately, the Quakes looked like, you know, while there was a few subs that they were a bit out of gas. Did any of that kind of strike you at all in the moment, Alex? Or, or what were your thoughts? in terms of how you saw this game kind of play out toward the end once the Quakes were trying to cling to that to that 1-0 lead? I mean, look, Jamin, I, I think it's important to say that the end result of the match is, quite frankly, a, a secondary uh, concern. Of and, and I think the primary concern is the, the well-being of the players. Uh, and there should be protocols in place so that players don't have to play through distress after an incident where a, a racial epithet uh, was a, a alleged to have been used. I think there should be protocols, uh, stronger protocols in place to prevent the players from having to personally deal with that situation uh, and, and, and to be placed in a bad situation uh, and then to have to play a soccer match after that. I think that's unfair to ask of the players. And um, I, I think it's hard to say exactly how it uh, impacted 
uh, each of them and, and each of the teams. Um, but uh, I think it's upsetting to hear that they were forced to play uh, or through that situation. Uh, you know, and, and, and I understand that, that there were lots of uh, conversations uh, that uh, were had uh, and that, um, you know, Jeremy Obobese himself said they felt uh, he felt comfortable going back on uh, the field uh, because of those conversations. But uh, it's still really upsetting that there aren't uh, stronger uh, protocols in place to be able to uh, to make sure that the, the player's well-being uh, is put first in that situation. Yeah, 100 percent, 100 percent. And so, um, you know, I, I, I feel that, uh, you know, we're about an hour into this show Um you know, it's difficult really to kind of, you know, reflect, I think, appropriately, you know, back on the game or to talk about, you know, individual performances uh, to a level of getting into things like, you know, the Cade Cowell discussion or the JT discussion or other things that we like to maybe get into and have fun nitpicking around. It seems, you know, kind of inappropriate, I would say, tonight to get into those particular types of discussions. I think praising the players for the performances, the way that they uh, reacted in the situation to those who, uh, you know, put in obviously a very clear high level of effort tonight. I thought Judson did great, um, you know, in a being asked to kind of step in and, and play, you know, 60 minutes, something he hadn't been asked to do this season. He was all over the place in the first half. I think we saw a bit of a throwback Judson, just like we, sh we saw, you know, what, what we would have called a throwback Yule uh, had this been an isolated game, but I think we were seeing just a resurging uh, Jackson Yule, and we're just benefiting from him maybe getting to uh, the peak of, of some of that uh, more current form. Jeremy Abobasi, you know, had his moments tonight. Um, obviously, the goal from Christian Espinoza, he was getting fouled all over the place, getting very frustrated with some of the calls, and but, uh, you know, put his stamp on the match, of course, with the goal. And, uh, you know, Paul Marie, I think another uh, performance from him that, uh, you know, makes a uh, a good case as to why he should potentially remain as the starting left back in this team. JT made a couple key saves in good situations tonight. So I think we should stick with the positives. And then of course, uh, you know, the players and how they reacted to the incident at hand and um, you know, how they managed uh, you know, that situation. Um, I think Colin's right. It's a lot to ask to put on the players to be able to make, you know, all these kinds of decisions you know, because other people, the adults in the room, so to speak, you know, are not willing to make make the hard calls and they put it back on the players to be able to make the decisions. That that smacks to me of like, you know, let's go ask uh, the U8 players, you know, uh, whether they want to go back on the field and stuff like that. Like, you know, it, it feels to me like the referee should have had a stronger opinion. Uh, Gerhard Struber should have had a stronger opinion. Um, unfortunately, you know, I think uh, Lucci was doing everything he could in the moment to try to, to make the situation palatable for his players. Um, but, uh, you know, I think the league is going to, to have expected more of a lot of people in the situation. Yeah, I, I think that's right, Jamin. And look, it's incredibly disappointing uh, uh, that this happened for a number of reasons. You know, one small one being that it was a great game of soccer that was overshadowed. The Earthquakes played well tonight. Jackson, you played well tonight. Uh, Lucci Gonzalez had a really good game plan tonight, and I'm glad that we were able to talk a little bit about that uh, because I know that's what we should be here talking about, uh, and we shouldn't have to be uh, talking about incidents uh, like this because they 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 shouldn't have any place uh, in soccer. And uh, you know, I I I think that at this point, uh, I'm glad that we were able to hear from uh, Jeremy Obobasi and from Lucci Gonzalez, and really really appreciative uh, of the clarity that uh, they were. Uh, able to provide uh, all of us about what happened. They, I don't think they had to speak to us and they didn't have to speak to us about the incident, but I'm glad that they were able to uh, speak so intelligently about it and, and openly about it in a way that reflects the, the values of uh, the Earthquakes community. So, so really, really appreciative of them tonight. Uh, and want to reiterate before we wrap that, um, you know, the Quakes Epicenter, uh, me, Jamin, and and, and uh, the, the Earthquake community, you know, will support the players uh, and, and will support uh, the team uh, and, and will demand, you know, a, a sufficient and uh, serious uh, response 
uh, from the league uh, in in regards to to this incident because what we heard tonight uh, was 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 really disturbing, Jamin, and it's really upsetting um, that it that it happened and that it uh, uh, you know had to overshadow the, the game of soccer. Yeah, it's un it's unfortunate, and it feels you know inappropriate to kind of like promote you know our things tonight. But if this is your first time on the show, so you know a bit about us, we do uh, we do a post game show at each, after each and every Earthquakes home game. Usually we start about you know ten minutes or so after the game, depending home or away, and access to press boxes to be able to to do the post game and, and coverage and things like that. Um, uh, and so we welcome everyone in and, and it looks like we've even had at least one person from the New York side. I'm sure we had more, um, uh, that joined us tonight and, and to everyone who was respectful in the chat and, uh, you know, came to be able to hear from, uh, Lucci and be able to come and hear, uh, you know, from a player and, and uh, I've been thankful it was Jeremy Abobasi, uh, in the situation tonight. Um, you know, thanks for, for, for the support. If you want to know more about us, quakesepicenter.com is the website. Uh, we do have a Patreon. Again, I'm not going to plug things tonight uh, for the sake of respect, you know, for the situation. But uh, if you're interested to know more about us, you know, you can follow us on Twitter at Quakes Epicenter. Uh, I'm at Jaymore Quakes. Alex is at uh, Quakes underscore talk. Colin Etnire uses the at Quakes Epicenter link. Uh, feel free to reach out to us. And of course, uh, you know, we can uh, uh, help uh, with any information you'd like to know about uh, what we do here at Quakes Epicenter. Alex, and, and, final and, thought? And we, we will be following up. We will be demanding, you know, answers from the league about what happened and about the process uh, in the investigation uh, and, and, and what unfolded uh, in those 20 minutes and, and, and after that. Uh, so, so we will be doing our, our best to, to track down those answers and, and demand answers uh, from uh, the league. Uh, and I, I also want to add that I'm, I'm grateful for the, the Earthquakes community tonight uh, in the way that the players were able to show unity on the pitch. That's something that Jeremy Obobese said that, that he was grateful for. Uh, and, and here in the chat, uh, in, in this show as well, that um, um, the way that, that people have been treating this um, seriously uh, and and um, even though I think it was very difficult and upsetting to to watch on on television and to hear uh, from about uh, you know from Jer Jeremy Obosi uh, and Luchi Gonzalez, I uh, appreciate um, the the way that uh, everyone has you know stood behind the players and, and stood behind the team uh, in this moment. Yeah. So our thanks also to uh, Quakes PR. We had uh, both uh, Jake and Pedro traveling for this one, and both of them helped us helped Colin. Uh, be able to get the access that he had tonight and that he was able to provide in the post game show. So super thanks, of course, to all the support that we get from the San Jose Earthquakes to provide our brand of independent reporting on the San Jose Center to provide our perspective without any uh, input from the club. Uh, they let us do what we do and we're always grateful for that and they appreciate our independence and uh, the way that we approach uh, games analysis, and you know, hopefully they they would be proud of the way that we handled uh, the show tonight. So with that, I think our broadcast is going to end, and we want to thank everyone for turning in. You guys have been uh, great in the chat, respectful for the most part all night long, and uh, you know, kudos to all of you for uh, bringing positive you know comments to the chat and your commentary on the situation as well as the game itself. Uh, have a good rest of your evening. And uh, we'll be uh, hopefully bringing you, again, uh, more information throughout the week uh, in our Slack channels and other uh, you know, outlets as soon as we have the opportunity to do so, as well as uh, in uh, we will be, uh, I hope to have a conversation this week to be able to share, hope to have another article this week as well. And uh, so you should be seeing more content coming from us here shortly. And of course, coverage in the post game show after the next Earthquakes game, which will be a home game next Saturday against uh, Sporting Kansas City. So it should be a good one. Uh, thanks again for everyone for joining. Alex, thanks to you and for hanging in there tonight. And uh, you know we'll uh, hopefully be uh, chatting with everyone a bit more as more information comes in. Take care.